ओम भूर्भुव स्वह तत्सवितौरवरेण्यम प्रको देवस्वीम धीयो यो न प्रचोदयात ओम शांति 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 नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स दिस इज वीडियो नंबर ट्वेंटी वन ऑन विवेक चूड़ा मनी टॉपिक ऑफ दिस वीडियो इज एक्शंस थॉट्स एंड वासनास रिनाउंस वर्ष नंबर थ्री हंड्रेड टेन टू थ्री हंड्रेड नाइनटीन कवर दिस टॉपिक वी स्टार्ट विद वर्ष नंबर थ्री हंड्रेड टेन निग्रह शत्रोर हमो अवकाश है कव चिन्ह देयो विषया अनुचिंतया स एव संजीवन हेतु रस प्रक्षिण जम्बितरो वाम्बो हैविंग वंस ओवर पावर्ड दिस एनिमी द ईगो नॉट ए सिंगल मोमेंट्स रेस्ट शुड बी गिवन टू इट टू रूमिनेट ओवर सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स that is verily the cause of its returning to life just like water is the cause for the flowering of a citron tree that has dried up before if a chance is given to the mind and its passions to express themselves there will be no end to their destructive floods therefore having destroyed the ego which is your soul enemy never give the mind the slightest chance to think of the objective world attachment for even the most innocent looking insignificant thing will pull you down to endless boundaries a sadhu having attachment for his loin cloth could not tolerate the red turban he brought a cat to keep away the rats the rats no doubt this appeared but the cat had to be fed and hence he brought a cow to his humble hut of study the cow had to be looked after hence he decided to have a wife to look after the needs of the cow after some time they had children their naming ceremony nourishing and educating them marries of each and less disastrous therefore never give a chance to the mind to ruminate over the sense objects vesya anuchanta sense objects will come your way with all their irresistible enchantments it is absurd to say that they will not come into your mind they will and they should it is but natural but let us not and crave them and commit ourselves to their thoughts mind is essentially of the nature of lust anger etc the six fold emotions are in their aggregate called the mind you cannot have the mind without these qualities any thoughts arising in the mind will belong to one or the other of these six groups the best way to control and end them is to direct them towards narayana desire to possess when directed towards narayana becomes the burning spiritual anxiety of devotion for the lord therefore turn all attitudes of the mind towards him when sense thoughts come let us repeat the divine name of the lord narayana when you try to maintain the thought of lord narayana you unconsciously drive your thoughts away from the fascinating charms of the distracting sensibility all around you these sensuous thoughts are the elixir sanjeevani that revives the once annihilated mind this is the miracle that revives the dead ego an apparently dried up citron tree when regularly watered for a few days revives and flowers again the tree which looked dead gets revived by a little water 
Similarly, the apparently dead ego revives the moment you take an active interest in maintaining sense thoughts. Discourage extravert thoughts as they arise immediately. Sublimate them by substitution of Narayana thoughts. Thoughts when oriented towards the Lord become spiritual thoughts capable of bringing about one's personality unfoldment. Stanza number 311 Dehi Atmana Evam Kami Vilaksane Kam Yata Katham Sayat Ato Arte Sandhan Par Tattu Meu Bhed Parasaktya Bhavband Hetu he alone who has identified himself with the body is greedy of sense pleasures. How can one devoid of the body idea be greedy? Hence the tendency to ruminate over sense objects is indeed the cause for the bondage of becoming and the idea of distinction or duality. Now Sankara argues to make the students clearly understand his subtle philosophical truth. Kama is desire. Kami is a desirer, a sensuous man. A sensuous man is defined in this verse as one who permanently remains in the idea that I am the body as long as one has the feeling I am the body, the body's demands for sense gratifications become imperative and one becomes seamlessly sensuous. Such an individual starts seeking sense gratifications for the body as a body. In contrast to the sensuous man, a realized man is indicated as being just the opposite. A kami is one who runs after the objects, emotions, thoughts, while the realized man is one who gets away from these to reach the self and its infi infinitude. The man of realization and desires cannot go together. Desiring is the mind gushing towards objects, emotions, thoughts, gratifications, while perfection is the mind turned totally away from all objects, both within and without. Just as light and darkness, day and night cannot coexist, so too ignorance and knowledge can never go coexist. They are at opposite poles, each the antithesis of the other. Perception of plurality is constant contemplation of the world of objects. This is the cause for bondage, the reason for all conflicts in life, the source of all struggles in existence. If this be so, then how can ego sense once annihilated ever rise? Sankara explains in the following verse the secret logic of the ego's return. Stanza number 312 Karya Parvardhan Bij Parvardhi Pridrishati Karya Nasad Bij Nasi Ma Atkaryam Nirodhyat When the effects are flourishing, the seeds also observed to increase. When the effects are destroyed, the seeds also are destroyed. Therefore, the effects must be subdued. When a seed is allowed to grow into a tree, the tree will produce millions of seeds. A thriving tree will yearly bring forth a huge crop of seeds. If the tree is destroyed, there will be no crop of seeds emerging from it. Stop the effect and the cause also ends. <coughs> we all have sense vasanas in us. If these are given a favorable chance is watered by our egocentric thoughts, the seeds, the urges for sense gratifications, the vasanas increase, grow, flourish and multiply. Then the individual helplessly confesses 
I cannot go out of it. Therefore, when the low base extravert vasanas spring forth to expression, curb them, curse them, do not allow them to stem forth and yield more of such poisonous vasanas. Even though the ego has been apparently annihilated, the vasanas which are the cause for the ego lie dormant and so if we allow the sense thoughts vesya anu chinta chintanam a free play in the mind those vasanas will revive and then the ego will necessarily manifest Therefore, by constant meditation upon the self in all, turn the mind away from sense thoughts and allow no chance for the return of the ego sense. Stranger number 313. Vasana Vardhite Karyam Karya Vardhaya Chavasana Vardhati Sarvatha Pansa Sansaru Nirvartati. Through the increase of vasanas, egocentric work increases and when there is an increase of egocentric work, there is an increase of vasanas also. Thus man's transmigration never comes to an end. In the previous verse, the cause and effect have been discussed. If the effect increases, the cause also increases. There the example of a tree was given to demonstrate the truth of the cause-effect phenomenon. The results come to manifest because of vasanas. The results are egocentric thoughts and sensuous actions. When the actions have manifested, they in their turn create more and more vasanas. From vasanas spring forth more actions. Again and again, this endless chain of sorrows continues. Thus, cause and effect are interchangeable. The cause can become an effect and this effect becomes the next cause. This cause-effect chain is never ending. When this body becomes incapable of expressing the vasanas, another body has to be taken up and there too, man indiscriminately accumulates fresh vasanas and moves on to yet another body. This is called transmigration smriti. To break this vicious circle, you can do nothing directly with the vasanas. They are already there. Their manifestation alone can be controlled and stopped by redirecting them into fresh channels of newly discovered healthier attitudes and nobler urges. The weeds were in the garden before I purchased the plot. Now I can only try to remove the existing weeds. If I allow the weeds to exist every year, they will multiply. So the moment the weeds sprout, I pluck them off and throw them away. No doubt fresh ones do grow, but I pluck them too. Pluck, pluck, pluck. I do not allow them to thrive in my garden. Every time the weeds are removed carefully along with their very roots, after removing them, I do not allow them to lie about in my garden grounds. I collect them carefully and throw them far away. Even after weeding the whole garden, I should expect at least some of them to come up again because there must be some seeds ungrown still lying scattered. <clears throat> they had not grown only because they had no chance to grow and flourish. They were all lying dormant, but I shall never relax. I will at last, there will be no more until at last there will be no more seeds remaining to germinate more weeds anywhere in my garden. 
I must then prepare different flower beds. Thus my hands must be constantly working on the plot, not only for plucking the weeds, but for plucking the flowers also. Similarly, the mind also must be well set and diligently attended to, as a gardener with his faithful efforts ever keeps his garden trim and gay. All sense thoughts are to be weeded out and spiritual ideals must be planted. When the sense thoughts rise up immediately, plug them out. This attention to the garden of thoughts must be a continuous job. There should not be any break in it until you realize the infinitude. Destroy this ego completely. There is no time for any slackening anywhere during this precious though limited span of life. Stanza number 314 in order to snap the chain of transmigration, one should burn to ashes these two for thinking of sense objects and doing selfish actions lead to increase of vasanas. There are two main causes for the increase in vasanas. Number one, continuous thinking of the sense objects chintaya and to acting upon the sense objects in the world outside kriya bahi he who subjectively contemplates upon the sense objects but apparently restricts his sense indulgence is called a hypocrite by the gita acharya Character consists no doubt in right acts, but they are built with right thoughts. Subjective thoughts and objective actions both create vasanas, limitations which drag the ego into new births and deaths. These two are to be cut asunder in order to end the tragedy of transmigration. These two forces prompt each individual to take up again and again an appropriate physical body to continue the stupidity of living for sheer sense gratifications. He who wants to cut off this endless stream of sorrow, the non-stop death from stupidity to stupidity has to end these two prompting forces. Chinta and Kriya are themselves no doubt the effects of powerful vasanas and they create a fresh crop of more powerful vasanas. If you want to get away from these powerful vasanas, you must destroy these two. In the spiritual path, there are moments when one has the feeling, in fact, a hallucination that one has reached a Somewhere these are no doubt great peaks, but in those apparent heights we cannot permanently remain in perfect safety. We may slip again if we look back, even once. Back means towards the object, emotion, thought, world. When the mind and intellect have turned towards reality, never again look back. Once you become an extravert, the ego at once precipitates. The sense objects crowd around you for attention and terrible vasanas are created. You fall again into sansar. All sadhana becomes important, futile, a great waste. So without looking back, go ahead with a constant forward gaze. Sometimes the seeker feels very lustful. This is caused by himself. There is no other cause. He himself allows a lustful thought to rise up in him and encourages it. Then this thought forces you into lustful activity and the two 
together create lustful vasanas tying you down they blockade your march and you get helplessly stranded when a lustful thought comes do not encourage it maintain the attitude of a witness towards it be fully conscious of it and chant ardently narayana narayana seeing the pure body and serene face of lord buddha he prostituted felt tremendous attachment she went to the place where buddha was resting for the night with fruits and other offerings as she knocked at the door lord buddha opened it and stepped out he saw a beautiful richly dressed girl standing with offerings of fruits at at that untimely hour obviously she had come to offer them to the lord but at midnight there was no hesit hesitation gautama said mother what can your son do for you poor woman who came with burning passion froze to the spot similarly a lustful thought might rise up in your mind do not encourage it cry hari om hari om with confidence and faith beware of the low thoughts at all times carefully sublimate them with divine thoughts stanza number 315 tabhyam parvardhamana sa sute samsarti atmana त्रियाणाम च अक्षोपाय सर्वासवासु सर्वदा स्टेंजा नंबर 316 सर्वत्र सर्वत है सर्व ब्रह्म मात्र अवलोक नहीं सद्भावना वासना दाढ है तत्रियम लैमसनुते ऑगमेंटेड बाय दिस टू द वासना प्रोड्यूस वंस ट्रांस माइग्रेशन these three however are destroyed by looking upon everything under all circumstances always everywhere and in all respect as brahma and brahma alone through the strengthening of the longing to be one with brahma those three will be annihilated vasanas increased by thoughts and action cause transmigration the pure atma in delusion apparently comes to feel the pangs of both births and deaths just as one suffers the agonies of drowning in one's dream the only method of destroying these three thoughts actions and vasanas is to recognize nothing but brahma everywhere under all conditions at all times in all circumstances oh that thing is beautiful thus when the mind craves for it immediately tell it that its beauty is because of narayana how beautiful the lord must be himself to impart this much of his beauty to this insignificant thing passionate lust transforms itself by such a divine attitude into pure devotion the lustful love for the world of objects when turned sincerely towards narayana is called a devotion bhakti those who are doing sadhana will understand this others will not understand now seeing brahma everywhere brahma avalokanam is not merely saying everything is narayana it is much more serious than a vocal declaration all this is nothing but brahma this play of body mind intellect is the play of the five seats panch koshas as a result of the panch koshas the atma the self in me is experienced as being limited and ineffectual all the time it is all my own consciousness playing in eternal variety as objects such a feeling and understanding will come as a result of developed and 
deep and spiritual vasana adhyatma vasana by this process of constant thinking of narayana the narayana vasana becomes stronger than the urges for sense objects vasana vasana we say vasanas vasana generated by our devotion for brahma the reality sat baba vasana can annihilate all our sense hungers therefore continue practicing it diligently this brahma gazing brahma matra avalokanam is to reflect upon the upanishad statements like when he be comes one with brahma then with what and whom will he see etc and upon the gita declaration as having seen the highest even the taste for the sense objects retire etc to meditate upon these and to become aware of upanishadic over all this is but the self is to annihilate the triple cause for transmigration vasanas thoughts and action stanza number 317 kriya nase bhave chinta naso dvasana akshaya vasana prakshayo moksha sa jivan mukti prishyate with the end of selfish actions brooding over sense objects and which is followed by destruction of vasanas the destruction of vasanas is liberation and this is considered as liberation in life these three vasana chinta and karma are factors closely interconnected this represents the chain of causation the one is the cause for the one following when sensuous actions are not performed many ethical and moral principles are operated implicitly at the body level if sensuous thoughts are not allowed to express themselves as actions sensuous vasanas will also end thus we are trying to end the vasanas by attacking their grosser expressions in the form of actions and thoughts we strive to control the grossan in order to finally come to control the subtler this is real pranayama pranayama control of the prana through a process of intelligent control of the effect vedanta advises us to control and annihilate the cause for the sorrows of life the vasanas regulate all activities so that fresh channels of wrong thoughts negative vasanas are not formed when sensuous thoughts cease to rise in the mind formation of sensuous vasanas is automatically controlled when the vasanas have ended there is liberation absence of vasanas is liberation from the thraldom of desires and actions moksha an individual who has thus eliminated all his entanglements with thoughts as a result of his freedom from vasanas achieved by controlling his actions is considered as liberated even by living jivan mukta stanza number 318 sad vasana spurti vijar bhesati hayasso vilina pe ama divasana ati prakrsta aruna bhramaya valiyate sadhu yatha tamistra when the longing to be one with brahma has vividly risen to expression the ego centric vasanas will readily disappear as the most intense darkness completely disappears in the glow of the rising sun the last line of an earlier verse declared by the increase of spiritual vasanas these three will get annihilated here we have a lucid connot annotation for this daring declaration when the narayana vasana becomes stronger the sensuous vasanas thoughts and actions will automatically get annihilated
the vasanas for the reality sad vasana is cultivated more and more when the seeker lives a life engaged in his sadhana of hearing reflection and meditation when the sad vasanas has started expressing itself a total change will come about in all his physical mental and intellectual relationships when we recognize only one narayana ever present everywhere we will have no likes or dislikes love kindness tolerance and mercy will thereafter come to express automatically through all our relationships in the world around us the ego and ego prompted vasanas the selfish arrogant misappropriating attitudes at the body mind intellect levels will get dissolved to be replaced by the new vasanas that have been now generated so asat vasanas are eliminated by tendencies created in the mind by constant remembrance of the reality sat vasanas at present we are living a life of identification with the unreal and hence asat vasanas are predominant in our hearts therefore we madly behave the way we do there can be eliminate they, they can be eliminated and a brilliant spiritual life of beauty and joy can be substituted by the newly cultivated vasana for the reality aruna is the chariot of the lord sun aruna is the early dawn the beautiful silent glow that heralds the morn when the sun has not actually risen above the horizon like the pilot car of the president aruna comes first and then soon the sun emerges emerges the pitch darkness of the night however dreadful it might have been gets dispelled with the advent of the light of the dawn aruna the entire darkness is dissolved effectively and totally then the sun rises the sun never sees darkness the sun cannot be where light is not light being its very existence the atman the pure knowledge can never be compatible with ignorance there is no ignorance in atma the self a when the sun emerges there is no darkness the president of a country as long as he is the president can president can never experience a traffic jam in any town at the moment of the experience of brahma there is no more any ignorance to be removed ignorance gets removed during the sadhana itself when positive vasanas sad vasanas have removed negative vasanas asad vasanas where ignorance has been already removed knowledge dawns vasanas in incessantly viewing the egocentric individuality constitute the darkness selfish and arrogant ideas are the darkness that brings about all the sorrows of existence they are all lifted at the very presence of the thoughts of the higher sat vasanas remove the ast vasanas when the ast vasanas are all removed one is ready for the reception of the great lord therefore the moral preparation and ethical adjustment for the resurrection of the individuality from its ego and egocentric assumptions is the very beginning of spirituality nay it is also the very culmination of all efforts this is all that you can accomplish more than that is not for you to achieve it will automatically come to you with such a prepared bosom sitting in thrilled patience of ecstatic expectancy like a lover waiting for the like a lover waiting for the promised visit of his beloved this hopeful and expectant waiting for awareness to reveal itself is called meditation stanza number 319 tam satam 
कार्ये मनर्थजालम ने दृश्यते सत्योदिते दिनेशे तथा दवेद आनंद सानो भूतो न वास्ति बंधो न च दुख गंध darkness and its resultant evils are not noticed when the sun rises so too on realization of bliss absolute there is neither boundaries nor the least trace or misery tamas is darkness night and things that are born out of darkness are called tamak karyam fear actually missing the road toppling over some stone falling down and wounding oneself the treacherous dagger of a hidden enemy all these are the concomitants of darkness tamas loots away our peace when the lord of the day sun rises both the darkness and its effects are totally lifted when the sun rises not only the darkness but the entire bundle of sorrows created by darkness disappear immediately similarly in the presence of god every step becomes correct not knowing him in utter ignorance we generate egocentric stupidity in ourselves and bump against everything whether existing and non existing existing things we fail to see non existing things we imagine and fancifully create thus we create for ourselves an entire world of confusions a most sorrowful miserable and tragic destiny indeed for him who has experienced supreme bliss there is not even a whiff of sorrow dukh gandha he has no bondage and hence the conditionings of the body mind intellect are not there naturally there cannot be any more sorrow for him that blissful condition of perfect release and joy is indicated in the following verse so i conclude this video at this stage thank you for watching this video namaskar my dear friends thank you next video number 22 we'll start with stanza number 320 and topic will be total vigilance its price thank you namaste